Hello, welcome to my tech fan. In this video, I'll try to do some kind of review of Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. I'll try to because this printer exists on the market now almost two years and there are hundreds of maybe thousand videos about it. Maybe I have a little bit different approach because I have P1P and actually I'm curious if uh, I want to print uh, PLA or PTG. Do I have the advantage of X1 Carbon or maybe the P1P is better because it is open and maybe have more parkouring and similar. Now P1P was sent by Bamboo Lab and they also sent me a lot of filaments for the testing because they like my filament testings. And I told him that with P1P I can print only PLA or PETG, not even carbon fiber versions. So they sent me later a hardened extruder and a nozzle, but I still don't have the enclosure on that printer. So uh, I got tired and I decided to buy the X1 carbon. I bought it myself to have possibility to print all those advanced filaments, because with this I can print uh, almost every bamboo filaments. Well, at least a few months ago, because since the X1E appeared, I can see on the website that probably with this printer I'm expecting some warping with some materials and uh, with X1E. I wouldn't have that warping because it has actively heated chamber, uh, partly a joke of course. Uh, in theory, uh, this can be also heated up up to 60 degrees Celsius, approximately the heated chamber with passive, so with the nozzle and the heated bed. Uh, we will see, of course, I will test uh, several materials with this. Anyway, let's unbox it and uh, start with the printing. The packaging is okay, maybe except one small thing. I really don't remember when I saw the last time that somebody is using this white styrofoam for the packaging of the CD printer. This was the content of this box. I have approximately 200 grams of the PLA basic filament. And then I have two types of the glue. One, one is this glue stick and the other is some kind of liquid glue. The spool holder, some tools, Teflon tube. These are lubricants. This is the thermal grease for the hot end. And I have here the 0.4 millimeters per nozzle with, with the heat sink. Inside it arrived with this two-sided sheet and on one side it has the bamboo cool plate, on the other side it is the engineering plate and we have the warning that we have to use the glue stick with this. And also interesting, uh, I got these two spare sheets, stickers, for the bamboo cool plate. At this moment I'm not sure because my favorite is the texture PI sheet. I have that golden version for P1P and I'm not sure that I can uh, just use it here because I think the lighter sensor needs smooth surface but um, I will see that soon. Let's prepare it for assembling. I have to cut these zip ties but I don't even have the pliers in the package. Mounting the spool holder. Removing these three securing bolts for the Z-axis, they are marked with this red arrow. And look at this, mounting this nice touchscreen. Dream of most of Bamboo Lab P1P or P1S users. Choosing the language, connecting to network, scanning the QR code, Interesting, it didn't work with 5 GHz network, only with 2.4. Accepting terms and conditions and some privacy policy and I'm really curious how many users really read this. I removed this white foam and now it starts with the calibration. Calibration complete. New firmware update, okay. Including the downloading, the firmware update was finished in approximately 10 minutes. Well, what can I tell you, this is completely different feeling. Now it gives the feeling of the premium printer, not that crappy textile screen. Let's analyze this top cover a little bit. It looks like it is from glass, but I think it will touch this Teflon tube during the moving, which I'm not too happy about. I saw some varying signs on my P1P when it touched the AMS from the bottom. So there I lift the AMS a little bit higher. And it is nice that we have this certain kind of ceiling line, but uh, I think during the vibration, I hope it will not hit the side panels because that will create some additional noise. And one more thing I want to mention, can you hear it? It's enabled, no sound. And this is something what others should copy from the Bamboo Lab, not the position of the spool on the back side. Absolutely no sounds when it is in a standby position. This is very rare really today. Applying some glue on the build surface and then between G-codes I can see a band chip prepared by the Bamboo Lab printing. And this is part of that auto-leveling and calibration procedure. 
Oops, looks like I have a problem because I placed the glue stick on the center of the board. These are some real time footages in case you are not familiar with the speed of this printer. Bad adhesion check. Hmm, it's good. Maybe I don't even need a glow stick. The bed cooled down, but even now it sticks quite good. Too many purge lines to clean, so I have to print the scrapper as soon as possible. I mark it because later I will compare it with P1P Benchy. And the quality is quite good. Well, I can see some marks from the bed surface, but uh, no stringing, great overhangs, uh, great part cooling. The only thing I don't like on this Benchy is this difference in the surface shining. So here it is more shiny and here it is quite matte. And I believe that this is because of the difference in the speed. When it's printed faster, the filament is not matted so well and this can be seen on this matte surface and this can be seen in the slicer too. I'm not sure why do I need a glue stick for this surface because it sticks really well. Maybe the glue stick would be the separation layer because maybe it sticks too good. Let's see if I can remove it with the plastic scraper. Oh, it's perfect. I'm curious, is there any difference in the layer adhesion between printing on X1 Carbon and P1P? And here I have these additional two objects because I don't want the speed to be reduced because of that minimal layer printing time. Here you can see the speeds and the flow rates. Again, some real time footages. This is printed on Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon. Okay, bed adhesion check. It's easier to remove now, but the temperature on the build plate was only 35 degrees Celsius and the glue stick caused the object in the place. Marking the objects. Unload. And now I move this spool to AMS of P1P because I want to print with the same filament. And this is again some real time footage printing on P1P. Marking the test objects. And I also printed the Benchy on P1P. Here you can see again that golden texture PI sheet, my favorite. Well, I'm not completely sure, but I cannot see any difference with the bare eyes. In both cases, we can see this shiny part on the bottom and then matte part on the top. Of course, we can see a difference here on the first layer because this is textured PI sheet and here I use the smooth cold plate. The overhang came out perfectly. The bridging, snow stringing, the top layers. Well, actually here I can see some difference. Here I can see some micro holes on the top, but uh, maybe this is sliced a little bit differently. I'm not sure. I want to record some time lapse, so I have to insert the SD card. By the way, I didn't got the SD card with Exxon Carbon. And here you can see side by side, I'm printing this owl. And this is the screenshot from the Bamboo Studio. As you can see, almost real time footages I can see on the Exxon Carbon. And this is with the P1P. I'm moving the mouse so you can see this is real-time recording. And I have maybe a frame every two seconds only. And similar footages, printing with these test objects for the layer adhesion. And this is again P1P. And then I have to take out the SD cards and then I can copy it to the computer. Here you can see side by side. Interesting. It's a bigger resolution on the Bamboo Lab on the left side, X1 Carbon, but I still somehow like better the right side because I have more brightness. And here you can see one a large still image for comparison. And side by side, again some difference on the first layer because of different sheet, but otherwise these two printings look completely equal. I cannot see any difference between them. And the layer adhesion test, so these three objects are printed on X1 Carbon, the average 47.8 kilograms, the brake load, and then the objects printed on P1P, and their average was 54.6 kilograms. So approximately the P1P test objects are 14% stronger compared to the X1C. 
carbon fiber PLA. I have some tests in the progress and this filament cannot be printed on P1P. Maybe it's really sensitive to moisture because it is in really great uh, vacuum packaging in this olive foil. In nice black color. Interesting, I saw some different colors too. And this bag is resealable, so don't open it on the wrong side. These are some test objects. I'm testing all Bambule PLA filaments. Uh, you will see the video maybe in two weeks. PLA Glow and it is also not printable on stock P1P. Hmm, this is an interesting one. Usually I tested only green, but this one is orange. The same test objects from this PLA Glow. And as I mentioned, the test objects from all Bambula PLA filaments. The video coming soon. And now it's time to test the enclosure and uh, I will test it with this material. This is Polymaker PC ABS. And this filament is one of the hardest for the printing because it requires 80 degrees Celsius chamber temperature. And so far the only success I had uh, with this filament is XMAX 3 because it can actively heat the chamber to 65 degrees Celsius. Well, here we have the passive uh, heating and the max will be approximately 60 degrees Celsius. We will see if it is enough for this filament. Loading the filament. Rotating, I'm using the engineering plate. Applying some glue. And closing the door. I will set the bed temperature a little bit earlier, so it's preheating the chamber a little bit. It's a little bit hard to see inside. It started with the printing and uh, I had maybe five minutes of preparation of the file and also did that auto leveling and now the temperature inside is uh, 42 degrees Celsius. This is not enough for this material, but I hope when it gets to that critical height, the temperature will be very close to those, I know, 55, 60 degrees Celsius. Inspection of the first layer looks okay to me. I'm not really sure where is the temperature sensor, but even after half hours of printing, the temperature is 45 degrees Celsius. The printing looks okay. There is no problem with it. It's a little bit hard to see through this glass. And uh, later at the end of the printing, I'll try to measure the temperature inside the enclosure, but it's a little bit hard to find some gap because of the ceiling line. Three more minutes of printing, and this is suspicious. Still says 45 degrees Celsius. I'm not sure, does it control somehow? Can I set bigger values in the slicer or something like that? Well, unfortunately, I have to open this door. Now there is a small gap, but I have no choice. 53 degrees Celsius on this position. I think it even almost touched the glass. And now it jumped to 47 degrees Celsius according to the screen. Oops. The printing is finished. Just quick bed adhesion check. Okay, looks okay. I will wait until it cools down. The bed temperature is 55 degrees Celsius. Let's try to remove it now. Okay, thanks to the glue stick, it sticks quite good. Hmm, the purge line is quite easy to remove. So definitely glue stick helps. The quality is completely good. Absolutely no warping on the first layer and the surface is great. So I have the feeling that the temperature was much higher than I measured or than we can see on the screen because definitely this cannot be printed on 45 degrees Celsius chamber temperature. And now my opinion about Exxon Carbon as a P1P user, most of them are positive things, just few small negative points, I'll mention them later. And I start with the positive things and the biggest is the screen. It really gives the premium quality feeling to the printer and it would be great to have some kind of upgrade for P1P or P1S. I believe with this they try to motivate the buyers to buy Exxon Carbon if, instead of the P1S, but uh, I think they are losing much more customers here because I know several users who bought uh, K1, KD Flashforge just because of the touchscreen. So I have the feeling that the Bamboo is a little bit afraid of their own printers as a competition. Similar things. I think we have it A1. I'm not sure about this, just my opinion. When it was launched, the maximum bed temperature was 80 degrees Celsius. It is not direct competition to P1P because it is also open printer. But very quickly they realized that uh, there are other bed singles on the market which can heat up the bed in most cases to 100 degrees Celsius. So this was very quickly changed. 
So BabelLab, don't be afraid of your own printers as a competition. So give us a screen upgrade on P1P, give us a chamber heater on X1 Carbon and similar. Of course, I know we have the pen attached, but it will be good to have something by BabelLab directly. I really like on X1 Carbon that it is enclosed. Uh, I can print the abrasive materials. Don't forget, I'm comparing to the stock P1P. The camera is better, bigger resolution, better frame rate, but uh, I asked my wife and my kids about their opinion and they told me that the footage from the P1P looks better, the time-lapse video, compared to the X1 Carbon. And the reason for this is that it is not the resolution that they will notice first, but the brightness and the contrast. At least in my case, the time-lapse from the P1P looks better compared to the X1 Carbon. Of course, these are things which can be adjusted in the post-processing, but uh, somebody who wants to use directly that timeless video and post to the social media without editing, in my case, the P1P footage looks better. Overall with Bamboo Lab, I really like that the whole ecosystem works together great. So we have the printer, the slicer, the application, the filaments, and uh, all those details work together great and um, everything looks finished, unlike very often I can see with some other Chinese companies, unfortunately. Now, I still think that uh, with the printing of the PLA, I will stay with the P1P because the uh, PLA needs more part cooling, it is opened. Here, the door would be away. I have to find some space for the top cover. And uh, you saw that layer adhesion. I believe that the reason for this is that here we have the harder nozzle. We don't have that good thermal conductivity like P1P. Don't forget, I'm talking about stock printers, but the difference is not big. I mean, you can always raise here the temperature by five degrees and you will get the same results. But in most cases, the P1P will be for PLA mostly and for technical filaments I will print on this printer. But it would be good to have a little bit more control about this chamber. Well, fantastic would be the upgrade, active heated chamber. But even if not, then I would like to I don't know, set the bed temperature to 100 degrees Celsius and then it would be good to have some kind of control about the, the even passively heated chamber. For my feeling, it is almost too smart that LiDAR sensors, first layer check, I would like to test that first layer myself, but of course these are things which you can disable. And I think if I want to use my favorite, the texture PI sheet, uh, I cannot use the LiDAR sensor, so I have to disable it. This is my first experience only with this printer, but you will see it a lot in my future videos because uh, I started a poll on my YouTube channel. I ask on which printer you want me to do my filament testings because I want to move from NDS3 S1 and Prusa Mark 3 and most of you voted for this printer. So you will see it a lot in my future testing videos. In most cases I will use this printer. If you have some other experience or other comments, you know, write me for line down in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing!